Hello, friends. My name is Host Eric. I'm a host of Talking with Friends People, and I got a question to ask. Oh, yeah? You and what army? That's my question. Tonight, I thought it would be worthwhile to review some of the snappiest comebacks of all time, including You and What Army, also including I Know You Are, But What Am I? which is a classic. It's a real winner, too. It's a real argument winner. Um, I would additionally include uh, And What Chicken Butt I think definitely qualifies as one of the classics. Take a long walk off a short pier, also a classic. Go fly a kite. Um, go climb a rhinoceros. All of these are important, important things. As important as anything you'll ever see in the world. But... Not important enough for me to continue talking about them. Instead, what I'm going to do is something marvelous. Oh, yeah. It'll be marvelous, believe me. You're going to marvel. If something is marvelous, really, you should marvel at it. If you're not marveling at it, then it's obviously not very marvelous. Not marvelous enough to justify calling it marvelous anymore. Maybe marvelish would be a better, a better word if you're not marveling. This is empty. Don't play the guitar. Mm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Shut up. Don't be telling me not to play this guitar. I just want to strum it like a sitar <laughs> Better than sitting at the bar Anyways Anyways I'm not going to lie, I'm liking the sound of this guitar right now at the moment. Um, we need to know. We need to see. We need to hear. The logic of love we divide the land like and from which we're rarely budge. Everywhere gather up enemies, I pray that how they must assign. How do they set their priorities? These foreign backstabbing entities into win. Are they committed to win? Follow the sailor from the way. Insult in cars in the desert. We're stuck in such great larceny. We all partition the rectories and cause destruction of the whole damn world. We share the world limits. Hoping Julie will too. Very share for four minutes. You just can't share things like they do. 
she's always thought that she should have bought two when she had the chance to buy. She just forgot about you and I thought that she got a call. People everywhere gather up in a means of great that now they miss a sign. How do they set their priorities? These foreign backs have an entities into win. I like a misery, follow the standard from the savage ways. Insulting, cursing, and desiree. We're stuck in such petty larceny. We all partition the rectories and call it destruction of the whole damn world. I'm Matthias Sanchez. Hi, JL. Thanks. I appreciate your enjoyment. It reminds me of that one time that I went to the enjoyment festival and enjoyed the shit out of everything. It was just like, oh my God, I've never enjoyed stuff so much. You know. And then pretty soon they ran out of the things I was enjoying. This is wants to be the case. Let's see. Here's a song for me to play. I'm going to play it a little more slowly, perhaps, than I have in past occasions. Trying to get it correct, perhaps, rather than wrong. Here we go. Sammy has a story that need be told. This is a song for an open road, and such a thing must always do its job. She married up to turn 19. And three kids will be weary now and questioning the plan. Agency, yeah, faces discretion, locking in our courses way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression, making sure those underneath them always run. Kids. Ooh, wow, ah, ooh, ah, might come up with X with Dexedrin. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, mathematics to produce success or impose more on just the rest. Agency that outpaces discretion. Lock of course is way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression. Making sure those underneath them always run. Doug at 20 got bourbon fun, likewise Doug at 21, and so forth well up in new middle age. Once it seemed to set him free, became his whole identity. Now Doug's about another drunken rage. Agency, yeah, faces discretion, locking in our courses, way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression, making sure those underneath them always run. Everybody's panic about the kids, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, every market takes the deck. Just the rest agency our faces discretion locking in our courses way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression, making sure those underneath them always run. <laughs> I don't have the last.
last part. I can't see it behind this other screen. I haven't been reading the, the chords I wrote down. So when I ran out of chords that I could see, I ran out of ability to play the song. Um. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. It was called uh, Agency Outpaces Discretion, I guess. I don't really know what it's called. I don't know. Everybody's panicked about the kids, maybe? I don't know what it's called. It's called something or other. So let's go look at what other songs I could play. Maybe I could play Piggity Piao if I wanted to. I could, maybe. I'd have to Piggity, I'd have to Piao, but that's normal. Totally super normal. My name's Captain Supernormal, the normalest man that's ever normalized anything normal. Okay, so let's take a look now at this thing here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this tab just like that. Just, just like that. Uh-huh. Yep, just like that. And I'm going to go down to there like that. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. You got it. You got it. You got it. You understand now. Oh, my gosh. This is something really, really special. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying to you right now? Sometimes I'm not sure if you know. Sometimes I think you don't know. Sometimes I suspect you do know. Sometimes I think you know and you pretend you're not knowing. Like, why would you do that? Huh? Huh, Mr. Man? Huh? You know? It's like, huh? All right, here we go. Now we're ready to rock and roll. I've actually got the, the meow up, so I'm going to go ahead and meow the meow. And uh, here we go. You're living on a time frame I will never know Alienation and humanity's soul Imagine you a future after the collapse Returning to the agency of isolated past Picturing community free of metaphysics Hunting buffalo while you're picking red delicious Knowledge of the seasons where wisdoms evolve Fire burning in the night to keep away the gold Hostilities kept at bay by what you think is in the way of life as children of the land within a godly world of man. Imagining a history that never could have been You lecture at the college, advancement is a sin Lamenting disconnection and every corporate act Asserting all your feelings and ignoring all the facts Hostility is kept bay By what you think is in the way Oh, life has children of the land Within a godly weather man you find maternity just so but now Wish you had been born any time but now And your experience won't run afoul Of exceptions that you might allow You visualize nobility sipping on support With tribes of peaceful savages and beautiful comport But few of history's people ever thusly did cavort Life was dollatory, nasty, brutish, poor, and short. Our ability is kept at bay by what you think is in the way of life as children of the land with an agave weatherman. With an agave weatherman. I'm going to record that song next. Uh, Ruth has made some drums for me. I'm really looking forward to them. It's going to be juicy. I'm going to sink my musical teeth right into those. I'm going to be bobbing on his musical knob. That's how I like to roll. Okay. Wow, thanks, Hambone. How kind of you. So nice. Um, 
Well, since people seem to be not minding it particularly, I will play another song. Play people don't mind that either. Let's see if I can do a song that I don't have to look at to play. <laughs> hmm, that's a tough one. Songs that I don't have to look at to play? Hmm. I mean, there's a set list somewhere. Let me look at the set list. Maybe that will prompt my memory. Set list Bobet list, I believe is what the document is called. Okay, S E T. Spell set. Set list Bobet list. Amelia, Old Matilda, El Nino, Agave Weatherman, Big Problem. Gerald, I can play Gerald. I know how to play that one. That's a fun one to play. I don't have to. Um, I don't have to look at anything to play it. Oh, maybe this one. Yeah, well, Rachel made it home safely, by the way, everybody. <laughs> Here we go. Um, all right. And Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a plot. Get the margarine, stay there, tots. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what it call Christmas. When they hire his firm, he changed that name. Yeah, well, though we thought there'd be chance enough to return to the work or that's rough, he'd get back to it eventually. Eventually. And Ryan is back on his business, thinking about changing back list to this list. So while all the people will shout his name. And Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why and the how. We love you, and feel you, come inside your heart. Let me turn this thing, I'll put this down. That's a good point. You should be able to see the guitar really more than me, I guess is more important. All right, so I'm gonna play this song again. I'm gonna enjoy playing it. I'm just gonna start it over. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a plot. Get the margarine tater tots. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what he'll call Christmas. When they hire his firm, he changed that name. Gerald always thought there could be chance enough to return to the work for that rough. He'd get back to it eventually. Eventually. But now his mind is back on his business, thinking about changing back list to list list. So how all of the people will shout his name. And Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why or the how. He'll see you and know you from inside your heart. Exciting. Till I think Gerald plays his part, and damn it, and Gerald's still new. There's too much to do, and he had dropped time in the underview. Too much to rebut. So where now and what? Too much time spent nitpicking this cue with you. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has 
the plot. Gerald has a lot to get the margarine tasting spots. He's got a good idea of a name chain business. But now, what do you call Christmas when they hire his firm to change that name? And Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why or the how. He'll see you and know you from inside your heart. Exciting, delighting, Gerald plays his part. Gerald has a thought. And that's how you play Gerald has a thought. Um, look at that set list, bow bad list again. That's not set list, bow bet list. This is set list, bow bet list. Okay, let's see here. I could probably play that. Let me try it. See if I remember it. There we go. Let me check out here. Let me pull up the document. I got it someplace. All right, I think I know where I got it. I'd like to play this song. Uh, Shame. Aha. Here we go. Now we are cooking with the proverbial gas, which is the best kind of gas to cook with. And away. I'm the one and the two and the three. Something awfully blunt, or words were wrong if they were dumb, so we'll burn my share of shame. It's each of our own failings, not us doing the nail to the wall. We fear so the other sailing off to reset their life and all. You can trust me, I can trust you, though. Neither trust yourself, much true. You love the faith between you and me. At least about that, we can both agree. Driving in the car last night, we had a massive fight. Each insistent we were right and the other one to blame. So when you pull that stunt, I scream something all play blunt. My words as wrong as they were dumb, so I burn my share of shame. My share of shame. Shame, shame, shame. Thank you. That was called. My share of shame. It's uh, a wonderful, a wonderful, a wonderful lullaby for us all to live and trust. Let's see what else I got here that I could play. Perhaps, uh, well, I know what I think I have in the old, ye old Google Docs. Let's see. I believe I've got throwing shade here. Yes. Throwing shade. I got at least the lyrics to it. Let me see. Shade. I do have the lyrics. I'm going to try to play this one slower, too. Here we go. My 
much noise in the data stream. Loud enough to disrupt everybody's dreams. Frustration me mistakes are made. Under it seems everybody's throwing shade. I won't be just another casualty of other people's well intentioned rules. I used to think that some tomorrow there'd be time for yesterday. The sort of thing that one can borrow. No one will feel to end the day. Mm. No uncertainties implicit. Just like an unexpected visit from a bunch of men all dressed in blue suits. I won't. It's kind of sloppy. It's kind of a, I, you know, it's like I need to practice things, but I never really practice. It's part of the problem. Sometimes I, I don't forget, like, every life lived reaches a time when the road's paid in two. Times, dark times, times of despair, times when it's hard to feel good. That's when I look for that sack full of salt and sea and that satchel of helpful goods. Satchel of helpful goods. Satchel of helpful goods. Satchel of helpful goods. Every life lived reaches a time when the road gets an end. I'm there, will there be anybody else around? Will I travel all alone? That's when I look for a sack for the soul. Hey, that satchel filled up with all. Satchel of nothing but bone. Satchel of helpful goods. 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 Satchel of helpful goods Tonight It doesn't really end with tonight <laughs> yeah, I always thought it sounds like it should for some reason End with tonight Oh, I'm so sorry I missed your call I did uh, talk to her on the phone though briefly Um I'm going to just say, uh, so sorry, I missed your call. Talk to you in the morning. So sorry. Oops.
in the morning I have you a billion trillion exclamation point. That seems uh, adequate. Maybe I should have added a few more trillions in there, but whatever. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. Okay. So, since some people are still here, I haven't driven them away yet, I think I'm going to play one more song. Mm -hmm. and sing at the same time. <laughs> but I like that little riff there, you know. That's pretty cool, I think. I'll tell you what else is pretty cool. There you go. Fixing anything at all, it's TE. I've got a question for you. You need more goals. I got suggestions for you. Solvency is one of those. And to know what got to be, how to get from A to B. What you gotta see when you see that you are using T-E, oh yeah. For your XX, dispute to your ass, dispute to your face, says you got no class. For your XX, dispute to the Q, our hand phone in the E says you're not true. He claims you're an imposter, name Stephen Foster. I don't know where he got his information from. Hambo, he's disputing whatever 
Whatever you got, he's like a rebel without a cause. Except disputing is his game instead. That makes him just a girl without a cause instead of James Dean because he's not dead. Oh, it's not just about fixing anything at all. It's about progression towards an outcome or a fall. Could be destroying, could be enjoying. Be Rob Roying everybody at the bar with non alcoholic drinks. Eric critique my call these points after your song. He says he doesn't know what you're disputing, so perhaps he doesn't think you're wrong. Do you know? If not so, I cannot either end. The answer is a tie, I guess so. I don't know. Okay, so that song was for everybody who ever wanted that song. The end of song time. That was a fun song. That's fun song to go. All right, now what time is it? Now it's time to talk about the chat. You're welcome, one, two, three. We're going to talk about the chat. We're going to chat about the talk. We're going to do both those things, okay? Eric, the bong behind you requires cleaning and scrubbing. Well, I'll tell you what. I will clean and scrub this bong when I get a scullery made. That's what I need, a scullery made. To clean and scrape my bong for me. Ah, yeah, I miss Rachel. I thought, this will be fine. This is going to be easy. I'm going to see her in three weeks. I don't know. You know, it's going to be fine. I miss her. I don't know. It's just... Well, it's like... Right now, she's asleep in New York somewhere. And... I'm reacquainting myself with having to wait to talk to her or something, you know? If she's sleeping right here, I could just look over at her or something, but, you know. Oh, well. I'm going to look at these chats now. Countess, when you say that the bong behind me requires cleaning and scrubbing, do you mean your own ass requires cleaning and scrubbing? That's what it sounds like to me. Have you been not wiping after you've pooped, Countess? That's not okay. It grosses everybody out. I was talking to a colleague who subscribes more so to the union style of functions, and she made the point that T.I. as it's characterized nowadays is an aspect of T.E. Did she mean by that that um... T.I., as it's currently correctly understood, was incorrectly understood by Yoon as T.E., or does she mean uh, what now is understood as T.I. ought to be understood as T.E. because that's how Yoon understood it, or is she saying it ought to be understood as T.E. because it's a fundamentally preferable understanding of it? Which aspects of it does she believe comprise actual aspects of T.E. and not T.I.? Those are all the questions you should ask when somebody says something like that. based on archetypes. By a series of logical jumps based on archetypes. What? I mean, talk about stupid. Like, Jungian cognitive functions in that regard, that's the problem with Jung, was he was an INFJ, he had a great idea, a brilliant idea, but that's not a TI thing he made. That's, a, that's an NI thing he made. And way too much archetypal bullshit. There's no reason for all that stuff. What's it called Christmas? Let's call it um, I'm going to call it Chris. Yeah. I hope all your sexual desires are fulfilled soon. Uh, I'm talking to Countess, not me. Okay. 
pancakes. Pancakes for everybody. Mateus Sanchez has made pancakes, you guys. Come and get in line and, and pile up your plate high with flapjacks, pancakes. We got griddle cakes. We got pan griddles. And, and we got flap cakes and jack griddles. All those. What is the title of the song just now? That was My Share of Shame, probably. I think I played that after Gerald's, if I remember correctly. What's the happiest song you know? I like the song, um, mine anyway. I like the song because what's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he rather like Dan? Is he terrible man? Is he sort of like Phil? Can't take your bill. Rather like Jack, you stuck on the backs. And what about Sue? You know what to do if they bring attitude. She show ingenuity. I like that song a lot. I don't, it's hard to play though. Do TI Doms use mostly physical or metaphysical TI or both? Um, ISTP, they, they both use mostly metaphysical TI in some sense because it's native, that's natively what it is. ISTPs are much more likely to incorporate the SE aspects of it. So they also kind of are more comfortable with the physical aspects of TI. ISTPs are are less comfortable with the physical aspects of TI, except where they intersect with the world of TE a little bit. I mean, they're both metaphysical because he has a metaphysical function that's a dominant. That's why ISTPs are a lot more metaphysical in their TI than either ESTP counterparts. Oh, thank you, Hambo, for getting it right. <laughs> I, I'm reviewing stuff when I was playing music. Um, Varax, but your comic sounds more like NI. Yeah, right. TE can't use a unit of orders of logic in a separate object oriented logic once you get attention. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, but they're operating within a union sense, means, okay, I'm closing the curtain. Just believe me when I say, it's not a bunch of bullshit behind here. <laughs> operating within a union sense means operating within a sense that's not defined in any meaningful sense. It's like saying, um, well, this broken car is driving in the sense that it's parked. <laughs> The union. I tell you where my union is. Right here in my crotch area. That's where I keep my yin. Keep my yin. I keep my id, my id, my ego, my super ego, my super id, and my regular ego. Super id. Oh, it works again all of a sudden. Hallelujah. 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 Why did it suddenly start working? Spark around this thing busted a while back. I don't understand why it's working again. The union rendition of something is basically the thing made more confusing with story time. <laughs> <coughs> 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 No, we aren't parsing consciousness. That's the shepherd. It's an archetype. Okay, shut the fuck up, you. Just shut the fuck up already. <laughs> right? I just don't want to hear this garbage, but you're shepherd and stuff. Well, him on card, you can use TI within TE's goal, TE's goal frame. Um, I witnessed it for sure today. What was the, the the way that the currencies work? So, look, you got to remember that the TE DOM operates in the currency of TI, and any DOM operates in the currency of NI, and NI DOM operates in the currency of NE. Um, 
What exactly does that mean? Well, it basically means I can't any without using chunks of NI, whether I want to or not. <laughs> you know, it's like it's a matter of whether I recognize which ones are NI and which ones aren't. But um, so it's true that a TE DOM is going to use a lot of TI in their TE. And an example is my dad when I said to him this morning, I just, I should, as soon as I came out of my mouth, I was like, stupid Eric, you're going to hear a bunch of shit now. I just mentioned in passing that Rachel's driver's license was briefly misplaced. It was probably at the pharmacy. I had to go back down there and get it. And what did my dad start doing? All the conditionals about, well, now, if you can't get it at all, then you could get this thing overnighted from New York. Did your dad leave already? I don't need this fucking problem solved. It's not even a problem yet. What's the problem is you're wasting my time trying to solve problems that aren't problems yet. It's like T E Dom S I N E. Their third slot N E drives me nuts. They don't understand when not to parse out potentialities. They want to anticipate everything. In N E Doms, we assume that um we'll be able to figure it out improvisationally or schmooze someone, you know. <laughs> like it's that any -E F E. First, I'll try to I'll figure it out when I get there with my demonstrative TE. If I've got to do some TE, I'll figure it out, whatever. If shit gets squirrely, or even if I just don't feel like doing the TE, I'll go Effie. I'll go, hi, it is so nice to see you here. My name's Eric, and I do have a small problem. I wonder if you could possibly help me with it. That kind of stupid shit, you know. Uh, Effie and TE are both solvencies, basically, in their own ways. Look, it, it, like TE and FE are the two functions that get you from A to B, one way or the other. FE gets you from A to B by dealing with the right people and saying the right things to the right people and smooths in the right people, you know? Uh, TE does it by pushing the levers and jumping through the hoops and shit. Like Rachel's mom did an incredible job of, of identifying, you know, getting the right hospital, the right number, talking to the right people. Yeah, you know, all that. I mean, not talking to the right people like FE style, but talking to the right role. You know, I need to speak to who? Okay, I need to speak to this person. Like getting shit, all that shit handled. That she did a fantastic job. Of it. Great TE dom shit. You know, ENFPs use blast and start straight away to be productive. Any more suggestions? Okay, there's no. What, what do you mean use blast? What does that mean? What would I do if I became 25 again? So, Eric, would you take anti-aging meds? And if you, if so, what would you do if you became 25 again? So, in other words, the real question here is, if it were possible for me to take a pill that would, you know, every day for a couple of years, during those years I took it, let's say, it reversed time biologically for me, exactly one pill a day, reversed one day. So it would take me about, you know, 25 years ish to get back to 25. So I'm 48 now. Um, or the other possibility is what if I could take pills and wake up the next morning and suddenly my body's 25 again? Frankly, I like my body better now, most parts of it, most aspects of it. I'm a little stockier, not quite so skinny. And uh, I definitely like my brain better now. I'm way smarter as everybody is when they get older, they get smarter because up to a point, because if you're, especially if you're an SI user like me, the repositories of SI knowledge that you develop through life become increasingly useful as you get older because you've got better capacity to link them to things. Yeah, I, I know it has that, but those things don't mean anything unless you define them as something. Okay, bear XX, that's incorrect. Okay. You definitely, definitely get smarter as you age. Now, it might be conceivably possible that you could make the argument that certain processes of intelligence, for example, um, RAM, RAM tests, like, can you remember these three things while working at this and still have those in your mind, that kind of stuff, right? 
No, very actually, you're not defining smart meaningfully. So, for example, by all objective testable metrics, I'm vastly smarter than you and vastly smarter than I've ever been because I'm winning all the arguments definitively, right? Um, what you're saying here about this, you're not, you've not come in with this claim of having defined the term meaningfully enough to win the claim. So I'm definitely going to defeat it. This is, you say, you call that wisdom, but that's functionally intelligence. Um, as, as the only meaningful kind of intelligence we can actually test. Like IQ is not intelligence. IQ is a composite score of multiple modalities of problem solving and or uh, mentally reconfiguring things. Again, Countess? Why were you kicked out of your own account? Were you fondling your account in ways you were not supposed to? Some intuitives made up to make themselves feel better. I'm smart. See, I knew I was better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I knew. Wasabi, I got an answer for you. Well, Wasabi. Seven. I have low IQ and that's okay. Even then, you are still wrong on the basis. Uh, just because you become 25 body-wise doesn't mean you become 25. Okay, well, I mean, but the question was, if you were to become 25 again, so... That's why I assumed it meant you were to become 25 again. If you didn't mean that, you should have asked a different question. That's because I tucked it behind your scrotum, Hambone. I gently tucked it there when you weren't looking. Just check. Just check real quick. Yep, left ball, right? There it is. Little, little dab of wasabi. Don't worry. Um... It doesn't give your scrotum sinus clearing effects. So it'll be fine. If you didn't love arguing, I'd say it'd be wiser to avoid arguments. Wise words indeed, one, two, three. Verax X, stop being a problem and stop being a solution. This audience is filled with sassy black women. All right. You better watch it. Mm. Vax X. Mm. Don't make me sass you. Don't make me sass. Hold me back, ladies. I'm about to start sassing. Oh, Lordy Lord. <laughs> oh, no, honey. <laughs> Listen, I'm tired of audience full of sassy black women. Right now, I'm more into like reality show booth confession thing. And frankly, that's where I draw the line. Yeah, I saw Carla at the house. I saw Carla there, and, uh, you know, she was being rude to everybody. And, you know, it's like, well, okay, go ahead, be rude to him, be rude to them. But when well, you got to be rude to my daughter, that's where I draw the line. All right? One, two, three, I'm actually a black woman, too. Well, okay, I lied. I'm a black man. But, uh... Sometimes I pretend to be a woman, just for kicks. That is what intelligence, being able to capture information and render it into a crystallized format. I mean, that's the thing. Intelligence is a dumb word in general. It's like people are smart about different things in different ways. Look. Most anybody who are going who who would consider evaluating the question objectively as best they could, or whatever the question means, 
um, would say that I'm intelligent, right? They, they wouldn't say that I'm dumb anyway. They'd probably say, yeah, he's a smart guy. Wow, he's really smart. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know what it means. I, I, we have such better ways of describing what I what I am. What I am is the guy who wins all the arguments. Because I'm the guy who, whenever he loses an argument, replaces that losing argument with the argument he got beat by, like any sensible person would. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Mr. One, two, three. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Those kind words. My phone's making a noise. I need to look at it. It means you get less pussy. What, me? Do I get less pussy? Because of what? Because I'm such a precious dandy? I'm a bit of a precious dandy. No doubt about that. Nick Sharon. No, I don't want to come into room one. I'm live streaming, fucktard. I'm live streaming right now. It says Lidge, Lidgem. What's the meaning? I mean? Oh, being smart. I, you know, yeah, totally. Uh, I will say this. Nowadays, being smart is a little bit easier than being smart. It used to be back when being dumb was more popular than being smart, more than it currently is more popular than being smart. It is still consistently, currently is more popular than being smart, which I'm not sure about. <sighs> All right. Room one. Fine. All okay, right, what up, Nick? Easy, easy, easy. easy. Can, you, can you hear my sounds? I can hear your sounds. Can you hear my sounds? I can hear your sounds just fine. Um, this is... You guys, guys, let me introduce you. You guys can't see him, but you could hear him. Uh, this guy over here is Nick. And oh, they can't, they can't see me? That's great. No, they can't because I'm just webcam live streaming. I'm not That's phone. classic live streaming. How you been, Eric? I miss you, man. Oh, how have I been? <laughs> Well, I see you've gone through. I haven't got to talk to you uh, at all for a while, but there's this Rachel person, and you've she's possibly an ENFJ. And yeah, way behind the time. She's not an ENFJ. She turned out not to be an INFJ. ENFJ. She's an INFJ. Yeah, I thought she was the ENFJ at first. I was wrong. Uh she just went back well, to what New York were you, today. What are you about? I don't want to. I don't want to cut the riff. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll continue going on my normal patter here. If you'd like to chime in, um, or periodically, maybe I'll say, uh, "Any thoughts there, Nick?" And you'll oh, you'll toss in either a, a bit of sass, a bit of serious, earnest goodness, or a bit of like. Uh, jabby humor or something like that, you know. Maybe right. maybe a maybe a short trumpet solo. All right. So anyway, ignoring Nick momentarily until I uh, ask him one of my inclusive questions. Who is this guy? Says one two three. Who is this guy? Who is this Nick guy? Nick, somebody who lived with me for a little while before Spacey, also who lived with me for a little while, you know. Um, I've had a series of people from the channel now living with me. Now that Rachel used to live with me, and now she's not anymore. But um, yeah, that should be the last one. Rachel should be the last person from the channel to live with me. Uh, I'll live I'll with the her. best friend of Eric. That's a better way to put it. Previous, previous best bud. 
<laughs> search out through the channel. Turn nemesis turned good friend turned uh Nick's an ENFJ. One, two, three. You're like a homeless shelter. Who, me? Why am I like a homeless shelter? Because I'm full of cots? Because I have uh, a limited amount of free coffee? Typologically speaking, not the women he's into. Oh. I see. Well, Nick, what's your favorite type of woman to have sexual intercourse with on a Friday evening? Friday? Yeah. ESTP. All right, good choice. A little like the butt, you know what I mean? All right, Hambone says you have stinky people living inside you. What do you say about that, Nick? What was the question? Hambone says you have stinky people living inside you. What do you have to say about that? Uh, I can either deny. I can. I can either deny or concur. You can just put the burden of proof where it belongs on the claimant. Hey, yeah. establish some proof there, buddy. I don't even respond to that shit. Yeah. You haven't substantiated exactly. anything. Yeah, I'm saying there. I got in high. Exactly. Right. Um, there's a willingness aspect. Like you have to want to be smart in some capacity. Well, see, that's the thing about being smart, quote unquote, is being smart. Really, is only a meaningful term when you're talking about being. It requires a prepositional phrase at mia. Oh, so I'm like a homeless shelter <laughs> because I have stinky people inside of me. Oh, now it makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Right. Why is this person still going on about IQ when nobody here cares? Is this an exercise of freedom of speech in any random form because no other form is available? Oh, Countess, will you stop being... You are... You know what? You are like a hopeless shelter because <laughs> negative people are inside you. Okay, very negative. Three levels, there's levels. Threes, there's levels to the shit. So Nick, I want you to tell me a little bit about how you've been lately. It's, I pass, it's uninteresting. Okay, do you still live in Ohio? I do. Were you disappointed by two, Ohio State's loss in football today? I don't, yeah, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Those um, damn Clemsons. Those fucking Clemsons. I, uh, I've been writing code. been very introverted last year. Mm. Like 100 hours a, a week just sitting in front of a computer trying to learn a new profession. What's your code word for effervescent? Pog. Pog. Good. I like that. I'll remember that. <clears throat> he doesn't know. Oh, no, no, no. Who's? Oh, no, no, no. I like that name. Oh, no, no, no. Um, okay. So, Nick, uh, any reflections on the changes of the chan around the channel or whatever since last I or lack thereof or whatever since last I've really chatted with you. Well, I've gone into the the always open room a couple times and <laughs> I seem to get booted pretty quickly. I mean, I, I, it doesn't have a <laughs> bot in it anymore. Apparently, apparently, my my behavior was was bad. Are you, Nick. <laughs> When I when Nick I behaving badly? <laughs> apparently, apparently, I caused. Dare I say, created drama. Oh, Nick! Believe it or not, <laughs> I know it's really hard to believe. Oh my god! 
Mark likes to boot me every time I go in. Oh, it's, well, yeah, I forgot. You guys are are uh, are like mortal enemies or whatever. I listen. I could give two fucks about Mark. He he really is. Uh, boy, I set I set I set foot in the uh, in any any open room and I'm booted within a matter of uh, milliseconds. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, well, look, uh, I just want to state for the record that some things about things, okay? Uh, this channel's been around now for quite some time and it's gone through a lot of different incarnations. And one thing that I hear periodically from various people, usually people who have a little bit more high SI, I think, is things like, you know, that was the golden age back then when I first came around. Now, it's, got, now it's gotten all shitty. <laughs> you know, it's like I hear that from so many people. But I've heard that for years now from different people. Like, you know, two months ago was the golden age, but now is so anyway. As far as I'm concerned, there's no golden age. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of different uh there's a lot of there different were, time there periods were, though. There were, there was there was arcs, is what there were. There, there are time periods that stand out more distinctly than others. Uh, the, the the Nick stretch of storyline definitely stands out, and uh, is one that I think about periodically in, in the overall narrative. You know, Nick's been portrayed as a bit of a villain in all of these stories, but something of a Christmas miracle happened this year. And uh, what I mean by that is I I sort of, I, I just recently absolved uh, Becky, well, not Becky, sorry, absolved uh, Brittany for all of her bullshit that she ever did. And I told her I would no longer delete her lightning bolts. She can lightning bolt the fuck out of my channel if she wants, it's fine. And uh, you are forgiven. So the thing is, Nick, I'm I am ready to forgive you as well. That, that doesn't mean that I'm going to you know seek you out for uh brunch on my junk. It just means I don't have any beef with you anymore. What did I do to? Was there any beef between us at any point? Well, Wait, I, obvious. I, okay, look. Um, it was much less. It was much more difficult to not have beef with you when I was with Kimberly. You know, Kimberly loved to complain about things and. I don't know. I, I, whatever. I, you know, we all fuck up sometimes. Here's what I'm confused about: is uh -huh. the is the is the general animosity towards Nick. I must have missed something. Um, I, but, well, look, Nick. There was a stretch of time at the end of the time when you were around me and Kimberly's house that you know. Well, there's in the house. Oh, Who's in the house? Taylor. Oh. oh, Nick, don't 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 you be getting indignant. All right, ain't nothing to be indignant about. You pulled some shit. You pissed some people off. You did some people dirty. Whatever, not me. Not especially, not particularly me anyway. But. You're not well positioned enough to be arguing from a from a indignation perspective. Regardless, this is not my normal format for live streams. I'm not used to including <laughs> other people in live streams. But of course, Nick wants to wedge his ass into some. Just he's pretty clever like that. He's an ENFJ, you know. They got they got six times more um, roomy bladders 
than other types, which is why they can hold the pee for so long. How did we? How did we get? How did we get me wrong for an ENTP for so long? Well, number one, you should explain that on the live stream. I've explained it multiple times. First of all, I've said multiple times since then. The thing to remember is ENFJs are quite good at basically presenting the affect of whatever they want to present the affect of. So, Nick, you were really good at faking being an ENFP for a stretch. And then once you were with Jewel, I started to have doubts fairly, you know, some distance into that relationship. I started thinking, no, he's not. This has got to be me. He's always on this F E frame shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I at that point, I was like, well, <laughs> they're, they're a couple, and they're operating under this narrative. I'm just going to leave well enough alone. <laughs> but, you know, there's your explanation. Why? What's your intent here? To challenge me in some regard? No, I just uh, I'm interested in the um, post mortem. I mean, it's, I've like everything, like every mistake I make in typology, it informs my thinking going forward <laughs> in ways. Me, to, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't just trying to. I wasn't out to convince people. I was convinced myself. You got to remember that. I don't. I don't I, doubt it. I, I don't think that in ENFJ's presentation of a of a certain affect means that the ENFJ is faking at all. It means they're using their dominant nature to do what it does, you know, which is it is hard for me to swallow, in other words. And be effectively um, communicative. I mean affectively, not effectively communicative. Although it could be effectively as well, but uh, you know. What's Nick's advice to get this ENFP to be productive? Nick, do you have advice for the ENFP how to make them productive? Dangle something shiny in front of their face. Okay, so um, one, two, three. I want you to get a hat that's got a brim that sticks out to make it easy to dangle something shiny in front of your face from it, okay? Um... ENFPs are intriguing, says Verax X. Intriguing in their FE specifically. I wanna I wanna examine and investigate your intriguing FE. They're also extrugine. What does that mean? Extrugine. Boyfriend again, partly because of you. Boyfriend again. Honestly, if, if I was gonna answer that question seriously. With the ENFP thing, I would have to say, ask them questions and excite them in a particular way that leads them towards uh, down a maze that you hope they like figure out what you want to do with the ENFP and then get them giddy to follow that journey onto the path. That Nick, what do you think they want to do with the ENFP, huh? What do you think? I don't know. Take them to the zoo? No. Not unless it's a sexual zoo. Uh, see, Hambone's got the right idea. ENFPs respond better to pain by a shock collar and give the control to your boss. Hmm. Fun. There you go. So much fun. Uh, okay. Get giddy with exciting questions. Suggests one, two, three. Great suggestion. ENFPs will work depend on the goal if the goal is worthy more so if it's necessary important and to a certain extent self-sacrificial like doing something for the benefit of mankind family etc then what's the, what's the consequent of your conditional countess to you get learn? ENFP comfortable and and get them to start talking about what they actually what their what their feelings are and then they'll tell you everything you need to know I pretend okay. I'm listen, pretend I'm the ENFP and you're I'm the ENFP girl and I seem kind of flustered right now. I'm trying to get this this scenery you've painted for this play we're putting on. Eric, hey, how you doing? I what you I, doing? I have had enough, Nicholas. I I'm sorry, I don't mean to dump on you, but this what? no, 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 it's okay. What happened? What happened? It's these, it's these. A backdrops. I'm trying to get them to be the same shade of brown, and I didn't make mixing up brown and now they're different shades of brown. 
What, what, what are you, backdrops, what are you working on? What are you, what are you doing? Okay, so we're putting on Our Town. It's a play. It's a wonderful play. You're going to love it. I hope you'll be able to make it. But the, the problem oh, is... Are you, are you inviting me? Well, I, yeah. well, Nicholas, you know, right now, I, I I don't have time to even begin to think about social engagements for a moment, okay, please. Yeah, 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 uh, please, yeah. I mean, look, you see, you see the mess I've got in front of me. Right. Okay, so how are you gonna how are you gonna help me? Are you gonna help me? Are you gonna just keep flirting with me? Are you gonna just reach out and squeeze my boob? Um, what are you gonna do? What's next? Now you, you just get them to talk, you get them to talk themselves into a, a place of solace. But she's freaking out about needing to get this brown match at up. At the moment, at the moment, that's just that's just any flaring out about. I know, but you've gotta help match. her. You've gotta help her, don't you? No, you're not even there's doing no, anything right now. You're just eating ham sandwiches. There's no eating. There's no helping A and B. You just, you just, you just. They just tell you their own traps that they want you to set for them. God, they will, I just am telling you the problem. I do not want you to solve it for me. Okay? I'm not trying to solve it for. Yes, me. you are. No, I'm not. Look at you. You're over here with a paintbrush in your hand. Dipping into your own anus to get some brown. Okay. Um, in essence, you keep them lost in a sort of fantasy while you stride toward them whenever you want them to do. Whatever you want them to do. While you stride towards whatever you want them to do. That's a good idea. Like, if you're around an ENFP, let's say you want them to get the mail for you. Stride purposefully towards the mailbox and then abruptly stop. On the back. What the fuck's over there? <laughs> and they'll scurry over there, get the mail. You want this? It's a good idea. It's a good plan. <laughs> that will limit your the requirements for your legs moving around um, so much. Okay, Nick, can you yep. talk to the live chat while I go smoke this cigarette? Yeah. What's up, party peoples? And bones, Soviet. <laughs> Nick, who are you? Um, I'm a fella that used to come in here back in the day. And. Oh, you can read it. Good. You can read it. Good. Yeah, I'm reading. You, you, you gave me a task. I'm reading. Okay. I didn't think you Who am I? Taylor, help me out with this. Taylor, give me a proper introduction. This is Nick. Nick's from uh, back in the day. He used to come around old school TWFP in the raw rooms all the time. And he's an ENFJ who was previously an ENTP, as most people, when they first are introduced to TWFP, are all self-identified ENTPs. Um, Nick is a bit of a shit starter. <laughs> Touche. But... Uh, I don't know what I'll leave out. I don't know. I think that covers it. I mean, that's an open-ended question. He He's the guy who who body slammed Katie at the first TWFP summer camp. I did not. Yes, you did. Of course, you guys were MMA fighting. Don't get me wrong. It, was, it wasn't in an inappropriate context. Yeah, I know how she is when she gets drunk. I ain't mad about it. Yeah, I, I wasn't saying you, you shouldn't have done I mean, I wasn't saying, like, you did wrong. I was just saying, I remember it very clearly, like, oh, shit, he's going to fucking slam her. <laughs> yeah, I did slam her. But she was talking shit for, like, six hours, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, look, that was a crazy night. That was a crazy party. Um, lots of crazy stuff happened. I guess Kimberly and I were on mushrooms a little bit, a little bit of mushrooms. And I remember funny things just generally slightly more funny. Everything just seems crazy. People, you know, running around drunk. Drinking is oh man, the last time I did really good mushrooms was right here. It was fucking fantastic, but yeah. 
my point of view is I became very good friends with Eric and Taylor, particularly. I met a female on TWFP that calls me to move from Nashville to LA, San Diego area. And uh, it was during the, the big dualism era. We, we all thought I was an ENTP. We thought she was, she's an ISFJ. You know, Eric and Kimberly had their ENFT, ENTP, ISFJ th thing going on. We lived together. We had bouts of orgies here and there. there Nothing too crazy. Now, I will say and, um, that was during probably the best time. The best times I had with Kimberly were probably very early in the room when you and Jewel were first around. And some of the best times I had with Kimberly were around that early arrival of you. It didn't last yeah, long. we had fun. Yeah, we, we had good times. Yeah, we did. We went to San Diego. It was fun. We got, we got good pictures of the beach. Yeah. And um, <laughs> no, that shit, that shit went to hell. Um, I and Jewel kind of left heartbroke of that situation. Jewel's the chica who I met there. If y'all know who Jewel was, I know who Jewel is. And do what? I said I know who Jewel is. Yeah, you know who Jewel is. I do too. And um. You know, we broke up. That was kind of hardcore. Made me kind of like heartbroken. Left this place. Left the whole TWP thing. And a um, year or some change later, I'm poking back around. Saying what's up. Well, I got to say, uh, I enjoy your presence tonight because it, it makes me feel the following thing. Wow. <laughs> this is so cool that I've got these various stories to tell about this channel. Like my whole life is all this channel. Everything in my life is all about this. My girlfriend. Well, really know how much stories we really have to tell? I mean, I've told a lot of them. I try not to. I, I try to generally tell the stories as they happen to some extent. But I do it, sometimes a better job, sometimes a worse job of telling them. But regardless. When I think about all the uh, the stuff that's happened, it's if I can pause and sort of reflect back to what I felt like before anybody paid any attention to me at all, to what I feel like now, it's shockingly, unthinkably gratifying. It's like, wow, this is crazy. It's you know, it's crazy. Even even my enemies still hang around. <laughs> Well, and it was, it was, I was, I was lucky and glad to be for, for you to, for you to let me become enemy, enemy into, for, Eric and I were big enemies. Right off the outset, because Nick came in with some fucking bullshit that almost sort of worked for a little while. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But, you know, months later, here I am judging one of his debate, debate, uh, tournaments, which was fun as hell. I'm living in his basement, judging one of his debate tournaments after I called him basically everything bad. Everything bad you can accuse somebody on YouTube who's in charge of a, a commune, a group of any sort, I accused him of. And he yeah. brought me, he, he visited me in Ohio and brought me a, a set of poker chips. Poker chips, and uh, that was that. It just seems like it would be a good gift for you. Seems like a poker chip kind of guy. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I thought at the time. I don't. I don't really see you as a poker chip kind of guy now. But at the time, that was sort of my impression of you. Like you know, go into the the poker room and like, hey, 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 I'm Nick, and I'm um playing cards. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, Have you been fun, actually? So, uh, the Kardashians are a clever, evil bunch, very good at marketing and absorbing black guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's racist. Hey. <laughs> hey. God. Um, you should know the story of the first uh, TWFP meetup. It doesn't sound like anybody in the live chat knows a bit about what it was. <clears throat> well, I mean, the first, the first meetup really was my trip across country, and the heart of that meetup was Taylor's house in Pratt, Kansas. Oh, I, okay. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking about the second one. Um, we're with Nick and stuff at your house. Oh, that was for the engagement, I believe, right? Okay. Well, however, go however you want. So anyway, but the trip across country. Here who don't know the good stories. Here is here's a story from the trip across country in Pratt, Kansas, that I enjoy retelling and thinking about because it makes me laugh at my own my own obliviousness. Um, <laughs> one day when I was there, no, we Becky's recent. Becky's not old. School. No, this was way before Becky. Way, this way, way Helen, years this, before. This, this is this is Helen. Yeah, this is Helen time. Yeah. Uh, okay, so anyway, it's actually before that. This is before that. That was so juicy. This, this is well before that even. So, uh, you know, I had I had a broken a flip flop, and I needed to get a new pair of flip flops from Walmart. <laughs> So Taylor says to me, hey, you know, uh, in Kansas, you can carry a gun legally in your pants. You know, would you like to carry a gun into Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'll carry a gun into Walmart. So, but I was just wearing sweatpants. And they weren't tied very tight. They, it was like the, the string on them wasn't, wouldn't stay tied very well. Um, <laughs> and also, I was, had one flip-flop that was broken, but I was still walking in them both, you know? So I was like, <laughs> trying to... I was walking really weird. And um, as I walked into the store, I find, I went to the flip-flop aisle, I got some shoes, you know, new, new shoes. And... Uh, um, and then Taylor and I sort of walked around the store. Now, I really probably looked like a weird homeless guy at that moment, as I sometimes often have a tendency to do because I, I don't pay a lot of attention to my hair and stuff, my groomings and things. Um, anyway, uh, and so, but I was walking in the store and Taylor was walking in the store. And then as I was getting a couple of things, I got some stickers. <laughs> I got some little toy things, you know, to play with. I don't know. Um, and light bulb. And, and, uh, and you were wearing your bedazzled sexy hat, too. I was wearing my sexy hat. That's good to know as well. <laughs> to make my look extra strange. And the fucking heartland of America where strange is not that. <laughs> common, right? Not like I'm in LA, people don't really look at you or whatever, it's just whatever. But um anyhow, then as I'm walking down the side aisle, the gun slips down my pants. <laughs> like it's no longer staying in my waistband. It, it slides down my leg. So I have to stop and kind of like reach down there and try to pull back up and like tie my pants again. And uh finally I go to the front and I go to the line, I give my basket a little shed like stickers and some some paints, I think, or something, and uh, some markers or something like that. And my shoes that, craft supplies. Yeah, with my shoes that I was buying. The uh flip flops. And I and I paid with the only the only bill I had was a hundred, so I paid with a hundred. And they kind of looked at me funny. And then Taylor told me afterwards. In the store, the store detective was following me the whole time. <laughs> I had no idea. They got, got the plain clothes security dude. I don't know how you missed him because he was just trailing you throughout the whole store. You know, you keep seeing the same dude in all the random ass aisles that we were going to with no rhyme or reason. I'm, um, not, I'm not paying attention to the, who I'm seeing because I'm not, I'm not looking, I'm not trying to buy <laughs> people there. So I'm not paying attention to the people there. 
<laughs> yeah. probably thought he was stealing because he's like reaching down and trying to. It what looks like he's trying to adjust stolen items in his pants. Really, he's just trying to get the gun out of his ankle. <laughs> I didn't even think about it that far. <laughs> it probably looked like I was stealing something. But um because I'm not obviously not stealing anything. So I don't I don't ever think about it like that. I don't think like they might be thinking I'm stealing something because I'm not stealing anything, so whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, then um boy, then then I got Taylor in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him if I could shoot at these birds on this lake. Okay. What kind of birds were they? Probably ducks. <laughs> Let's just say they're probably ducks. Um, I don't know. Whatever kind of birds they were. If I could shoot at those birds with this Glock 9 millimeter that he let me use. He said, go ahead and shoot at them. And I did. Needless to say... I did not hit any birds with the handgun. But I did end up on a affidavit <laughs> to justify a search of Taylor's house because I had illegally apparently shot at some geese. Well, I still say they were ducks. You can't even see them in the video for God's sakes. They I'm just, gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna make the video public again and drop it in the live stream comments for anyone who wants to watch it my case is over and done and so it's no risk to me anymore but what happened was when they when i got raided by the sheriffs um their their affidavit was so weak through and through that they just found anything that they could get to try to, to thicken up the uh the affidavit and look make it look like they had more dirt on me well one of the things that they chose to pull was this video where Eric is shooting into the sky at a flock of songbirds way off in the distance with a fucking Glock 9 millimeter, and I'm filming it. Um, and they claimed that that was evidence of poaching. And actually, they included that part in the affidavit twice. Of uh, course, I, I did know. not hit yeah. anything. I First of all, this is like the first time I'd ever shot a handgun, okay? I shot a rifle with my dad before 22 single bullet bolt action rifle you just put one bullet in at a time you know um i shot that when i was a kid but that's the only other time i've shot a gun ever you know so i obviously didn't know what i was doing <laughs> taylor kind of laughed at me a lot because apparently it looked pretty clearly like it did, i didn't know what i was doing so uh but that was that was fine it was a lot of fun and i was i was grateful that he didn't shoot me when i started walking in front of him you know, <laughs> walking down, walking down range of his fire, you know, he ceased fire, which was nice. I appreciated that. Much better than a bullet in the back. Um. Okay, so other stories about the past are plentiful, but I'm going to try to bring us back to the present for a moment, and let's see what's going on in the live chat. If there's anything that needs to be addressed. I wouldn't mind shooting a gun again someday. But. Oh, well, it turns out, Hambone, the gun he gave me was not loaded, <laughs> which is probably smart. <laughs> he didn't tell me that until afterwards, but it was, it was never loaded anyway. So I couldn't shoot my penis off, fortunately. I uh, didn't want to, I definitely didn't pull the trigger at all. I was very careful not to pull the trigger. You know, I try to be very careful with it, obviously. Guns are dangerous. They're like more dangerous than knives even. And knives are super dangerous. <laughs> How do you guys feel about, in a couple of years, being able to simulate universe with quantum computer? Um... How do I feel about it? You mean, do I, are you asking me, is it probable? Or how will I feel about it if it happens? Or are you saying it definitely will happen? So how are you going to feel about it? Or um, if we are able to simulate the universe, it would. The problem with simulating the universe, 
You have to simulate observation as a force vector. And we don't have a very good understanding of how that force vector works. You're terrible with Glocks. I'm terrible with Glocks. You, you should update the um, live stream title. What does it say right now? Oh, you and what you army? What army? <laughs> right. Well, I was reviewing important sayings from history, such as you and what army. <laughs> um, I know you are, but what am I? Uh, if uh, if you if you don't like the the heat sad of the kitchen, take a long walk off a short pier, go fly a kite. Those are all classic sassbacks from history. I don't know. It would be much more dangerous trying to carry an unsheathed knife in your sweatpants. Depends how sharp it is, hand bone, doesn't it? A very dull knife, not so dangerous. A butter knife, for example. Angantir, I PM'd you, but I'm a lion. Oh, here, Taylor. I'll make it so you can post that link. Here you go. Face to face. Now you can post a link. We're two of a kind. Making it rhyme. Something in Piao. Something in Piao. Hey, Eric. Yes. Eric, can you make me can you make me a um not able to be banned kicked guy? Can I make you a what? No. no. Not be able to be kicked, guy. I I don't even have any idea. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> I I don't even I, look that raw room stuff. That wherever going on in there, that's fundamentally not my space anymore. I may pay for the room, but I mean it's it's like it's it's generally okay. No, okay, gotcha. It's like it's my playground, but. I'm not amongst the kids playing there, so I don't really set the rules. Uh, and I don't really ha feel any need to intervene That's in anything fine. over there. Here, but I want to explain why, Nick. The reason I don't feel any need to intervene over there in anything is because it's not being recorded anyway. So, like, what's the point of it? I just don't want to be booted fucking left and right. Well, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, mighty slabs. If it is within thine favored perception of how the future manifests, please let it be so that Nick is afforded tolerance and welcome that he so longs for in the GWFP Raw Rooms. Amen. Amen. Okay. There you go. I should take care of it. And also with you. <laughs> I feel more unsafe in the world knowing host Eric has shot a gun before. Uh, no, I'm very safe with it. I I, I, uh, I always point it away from people. He doesn't watch other people's guns, though. So he keeps his pointed away, but then he'll run right in front of yours because he's trying to shoot a bird. And he's, <laughs> he just wandered off downrange. <laughs> I have a meme worth watching, Eric. Please, may I have a spanner sh to share? A spanner to share? What is this? What is that fucking mean? We're gonna have a poster link, and then I'm gonna un, I'm gonna un, yeah, you. <laughs> a spanner equals wrench. Why is it called a spanner? Who calls it a spanner? Is that some foreign term for it, or is it just a slang word? Um, person who asked, just type in Qtrits on Google. Hello? That's pretty sassy, Barax X. I don't think the person who asked a question deserved to have you tell him in such a sassy fashion, fashion to Google it. UK English. UK English. What is that sound? Is that a beard on this four o'clock? Oh, it sounded like a police car. 
It sounded like the the whoop, whoop. when they do that with their police siren, you know. Um, ah, right, there's not host marks here as well. Another old timer from way back when. You know, yeah, he used to prospect for pomegranates in the oh, pomegranate no. mines of mines of old Arizona. I feel like El Guapo in uh, the Three Amigos when he. He goes and says, I, am, I know each of you. You, Diego, we fought together at the Battle of Mian. You know? Can right. we hear the story about when Nick and Mark got in a fight and they're still fighting? Once upon a time, <laughs> Nick and Mark <laughs> started hating each other. All right. I'm, what I'm, happened? I don't even fucking know. I think I had to do with a chick, maybe. Ah, uh, which one? I would guess probably uh, Captain Gemstone. That's her. Oh, Jewel. Yeah. Jewel, right. She She's asked us to start calling her Captain Gemstone. I don't know if you've been informed yet. Oh, I haven't. I texted her the other day. She texted me. She was like, uh, you know, hey, I'm Jewel. I'm being a good ISFJ friend and not, uh, and not uh, leaving you to suffer and alone. And I was like, oh, that's nice. She's engaged to Aaron now. I like Aaron. Okay. Throw a spanner in the works. Throw a wrench in the works. Throw a spanner and my wrench in the works in the span. Yeah. Uh, Canvas is a, what you call a, um, a loose cannon, I think, maybe. I'm not sure. How loose is your cannon? <laughs> Countess. Mm. It's a good question to ask a woman. Um, can you three handle the talking out loud part for a second while I just smoke a cigarette? Nick and uh, Mark, can you guys fight for us, please? Why were you guys fighting? Now, Mark, why have you been kicking Nick all night? Because um, I like doing it. <laughs> Mark Nick, how does that why? make you feel? What's your response to Mark? Uh, I'm a little disappointed, Mark. You are? Yeah. I think we've all been disappointed it's in Mark pedantic. before. It's pretty pedantic. I mean, if anybody has a reason to be upset, it'd be me. Why is that? Uh, trying to take my chick at the time? I don't know. Mark, is this true that you tried to take his chick? Absolutely not. What? Did you try to take anyone's chick, Mark? I get all the chicks. I take all the chicks. Are you holding in a hit, Mark? Okay. Nick, what do you have? What are your thoughts on that? It sounds like you don't believe what Mark is saying. It's just so ridiculous to even engage in the way he just said. There's no. There's no further. Anything. It's insane. It is not making for very good drama either. How many of your bitches can Will B have? Who Will P have? Listen, what I think Mark's upset with is that in real life, when I was face to face with him, I made him very scared and very, very, very um, what would you say? Um, not docile, but hmm. he, he, he was basically a little bitch. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> it is. As both of you yeah. know, as all of you know, I was in jail at the time. So could you guys do a better picture of recreating what went down? <sighs> Did one of you say something mean to the other one? You know what? I'm going to send Jewel a message. Maybe we need Jewel to explain what happened. Good luck. She won't come in here. 
Oh my God, that would be hilarious. Mm-hmm. I totally want Joel to come in here. But we don't have any more. Oh yeah, this you, is. Then, then you send her the message because her and I are beefing. Okay, well, no, I, she and I are just, I'm trying to mend that relationship. I don't want to. I don't want to tank it right away. I just sort of reclaim okay, it. That shit's scandalous. All right, fine. I'll send her a message. She won't come in, though. No, she won't. But I'm going to ask her anyways. Let me find her. You're like, come on, Jewel. Oh, Here's come on. I don't really give a fuck. Like, this is water on the bridge. Like, if Mark's still butthurt, that's fine. My, my conjecture is that he... Nicholas, your I don't want my butt to hurt though. Heal my butt. <sighs> Mark. I mean the fact that you just you can't even stand to be you can't even stand me to be in a room. You have to boot me every time like a little child. Just shows your your animosity. You're 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 just you're just clinging on to the fact that you just got you, you just lost in every single way. Yeah, no, I am. Totally. You and I, I confronted you violently, and I've never seen anybody cave so quickly in my life. My bones I, told you, I, told, I told you I was gonna. I told you I was gonna beat you over the fucking head and, and murder you. If my, if I could jump out of my skin, I would have done it. Dude, you did. Hey, I saw hold, it. Hold on, though. Let's not vocalize physical threats, even referentially, directly like that, because probably YouTube will wag their finger. That's the point. That's why I don't want to go down this bridge. I, I, I feel well. Um, Would you like to go across it? I think that I have more respect. I, I have respect for Mark somehow. And the answer is you move the people, not the food. And I'm surprised that he is not able to get past some past things that have no bearing on our life right now. He, I mean, it's still having bearing in your life because you keep getting kicked. Well, are you talking about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln? That's something from my past that has no bearing on my life. Is this why I have a high school dreams? Is this why I have high school dreams? I don't know why. <laughs> you guys can get down to this though. Why does why does Mark keep booting me? That's an interesting question. I told you, I enjoy doing it. Only my heart. Mm. Okay, well. What about it do you enjoy the most? Well, look, my question is this. Now, if it were somebody other than Nick, Mark, would you provide that answer? I mean, why would I be asked about it? Well, presumably you'd be kicking them. I don't know of this other mark that kicks other people besides Nick. <laughs> okay, right. So um, I guess the, the fundamental question is not whether or not you enjoy kicking him, but why it is you feel it's acceptable to enjoy kicking him, whereas you don't feel it's acceptable to enjoy kicking other people. I don't know, just preferences, I guess. <laughs> That's not really a justification so much as it is a description of a completely arbitrary calculus. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Hey. Do you think that's a good thing to do? I beat I beat you in the argument, Eric. I beat you. It's over. Arbitrary calculus. I win all the time. Okay. <laughs> um <clears throat> Is Nick? No, that's a different Nick. That was a different Nick, also ENFJ, that I he lives in LA and paid me to type him. Um, this is old Nick, and he's he's upset because Mark keeps kicking him from the ropes. Um, um, the thing is, I'm not even I'm not even the only one that's doing that, so. He thinks it's always me, but it's definitely not. So, Eric, tell Mark I understand what he told me the last time. Tell him dismad. 
This is okay. Verax X. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about or not. I don't know what that is. My conjecture is that Nick resorts to violence because he's jealous of his of Mark's increased social capital in the current ecosystem. Throwing a little gasoline onto the fire, ham to the bone, returning from the 76 station with a gallon of 91. I appreciate you for that ham bone. You're doing the Lord's work. Mark has never had more social capital than I have. He's not. He's never been more capable of 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 of, of well, anything ladies re related than me. Right. And that, I think that's what frustrates him at his core. It started off with Janelle. Uh, Nick, let me do a little work on your behalf for a second. So thank you, Mark. Under what circumstances do you think it might become ethically contraindicated for you to continue booting somebody like Nick? Ever? Yeah, never. Okay, so why? I mean, I asked him to apologize earlier. I gave him plenty of room to do that, and he didn't. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Then I asked what I'm apologizing. I genuinely asked what I'm apologizing for, what his grievances were. And he booted me for asking that. I think that's a reasonable question, Mark, since I wasn't there and I don't know. I asked for yeah. my grievances. Yeah. You aren't, you aren't grievances. There knows exactly grievances. 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 <laughs> what is what what are your grievances that you would like apologize for? Yeah. And then, and then Nick will do it in a way that is not sarcastic. It, I, I, I I genuinely want I was genuinely was going to apologize. And then he booted me for asking that question. And it was like, ah, you're just kind of like there was a ship, there was a ship and it was sailing, and now it's sailed away. It's no longer there. So there's no apology good enough for Nick now. Well, hold on a second though. I this is got, a bitter person. I've got something to say about this. Now, Mark, it's sort of aesthetically aesthetically immoral. Okay. Aesthetically immoral to not engage the subject now when it's most interesting and to have engaged it before when it was least interesting. That's not a problem. That's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. But he's never engaged it, which is the thing. I mean, I I was interested before. I'm not interested now. How about but see, the thing is, we're not talking about your subjective level of interest. We're talking about the objective level of interestingness of the objects which you create with your mouth. Okay. And yet you are unmoved. I got, I got nothing. I, I'm unmoved. Do you have to take a bowel movement, maybe? I mean, that's possible for sure. Okay, maybe I mean, that's why you keep booting Nick. Maybe you're constipated. Um, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, my my butt, it, as was said. So why won't you actually address the ethics question that I'm trying to get it to address? You think it's irrelevant? Because it's petty. It's I, petty. Nick, Nick, you're not helping. That's not helping me actually get an I mean, answer. Why don't I address the ethics problem? The ethics question, question yeah. What's no, that? I didn't say problem. What was the question? Well, what Taylor said. So basically, like... At what point would it become unethical to continue booting somebody? And if never, why not? You know, why is how much uh, punishment for a previous wrong would be adequate in terms of bootings? If presuming, you know, because you're playing judge, jury, and executioner, right? I mean, I'm just removing him from my presence. You know, it's not. I'm not removing him from the room. You can be there when I'm not there. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no. Uh, yeah, you're you're playing. Yeah. You're playing slippery slippery boundary, uh, skate around party. Slippery okay. slippery boundary skate around party is not a party I want to attend. 
All right, well then put a wall up. Mark, listen, it's your party is spilling over the, the wall. It's it's spilled all over my right. yard. Your party has. So I, I want you to come help me sort out the mysterious objects that have spilled into my yard. Like what's this thing? I thought, I thought I thought you said it wasn't your yard. Or you I, call it a playground I, that you I, that you no longer I, I, attend. I, 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 I mean, I, 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 all right, you win. <laughs> but I attend it. It spills onto my playground. Mm -hmm. Mark. Mark. Howdy. Hello. <laughs> you are you are an <laughs> obstructionist, Oliver, tonight, aren't you? He is. He's such an obstructionist, all Oliver. Okay, well, obviously we're not going to get anything out of Mark. Now, Nick, I will also tell you this, so you don't even bother attempting anymore. Your ridiculous epi well poisoning tactics just simply are, they don't work and they make you appear to be projecting more than anything else. So I understand you're frustrated. I can get why. I would actually like to see Mark, you know, be a little more Christ like about this, perhaps. <laughs> but be more Christ like isn't actually times. officially a rule around here. There's no, I agree. 70 times seven, there's your answer to your question that you asked earlier. What was the answer to it? I mean, how many times should I um, be willing to accept an apology? But that assumes that assumes the premise of your verdict on it. Nick, there you go. Whatever that number is, 140, whatever, whatever that number is, type you're sorry in the chat that many times. Then he has to. He's Jesus committed. would kiss all of them. Jesus was that much of a slut. Um, did he just kiss? Did he French kiss? Did he fondle? Did he, did he do a reach around? What is but, this? Uh, live? Yeah, it is. It's live. What is this? What is this? Live? What are you? Dead? If, if, if this was a... If, if Here's the problem. Is that Mark has unquote... <laughs> Hour to boot, and if he's upset and actually wanted to talk about it in a democratic setting, I have just as much things to be objectively upset about than he, as he does, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm cool. So he's, in, in, from my perspective, he's being petty and. A little cunt. Does that make you want to kill him? Hey, hey, hey. No. No, no trying to kill people. All right, no. so look. I, I, tried, I tried to, I asked him to come in a one-on-one -on -one conversation so I could understand why he's upset, so I could genuinely apologize. And he booted me for saying that. So I think this dude is just twisted. Well, look, here's the thing. I have no idea how to do anything with that shit. Even I don't, I don't know the passwords. I don't, I don't know anything about it. It's I put it all into other people's hands, and I just, it's like I don't remember how Mark became a whatever. I don't know if I made him a whatever or not. I, I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. Is it. like a moderator or something or what? Well, like I just won't come in here unless I'm talking to you or Taylor. Well, I mean, yeah, it's I mean, happen. I won't. I mean, things. I'm never in here. I won't miss you because you won. You won is basically what it is. Mark's petty bitterness beat out democracy and <laughs> his his his. Let us all mourn democracy's demise. His twisted panties. Mark, you killed democracy. What the fuck? Awful. What's wrong with me? 
Which I've never been that big a fan of democracy myself. It's kind of an overrating system. All right, AG last sides with you, Nick. He says, Mark is stupid, Lamal. What do you think about that? I think that's 100% true. I don't think he's stupid. I, I, here's the thing. I like Mark, as weird as it is. I said some ridiculous things to him. I fucking, you know, I think uh, he has his own issues. I've, 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 I, I, Mark invited me to his home. He gave me, he let me sleep in his apartment. We hung out together. I like the guy apart from the drama. I can separate the drama we experienced from the actual guy. Look, Nick, Mark, I told both of you guys, if you sleep with each other, things are going to get weird. I was right. That was a problem. A small violin? Should have stopped at the door. <laughs> yeah, well, he could have stopped at the door. Or he could have gone balls deep. He chose the latter. I mean, I was just shaking so much. I didn't know. I couldn't even talk at the time. So until he raped you. Yeah. Well. No, it was Mark's first no. experience of real. <laughs> Mark's first experience of real intimacy. Okay. First time right. he really felt like somebody knew him inside his body. Like a pancreas. Um, how many people here have a pancreas? Anybody? Show of hands. Any pancreas fans out there? No? Oh, this is just me. <laughs> All right. Well, what's my new phone number? It's 626-615-8751. 626-615-8751. It's 626 626- it's six one five. I'm sorry. It's six two six six one five eight seven five one. Eric, tell Mark I am mad, M A D, and that I understood what he told me last time. See, good. Okay, he says. Stop telling me that, Barracks X. He says six two six six one five eight seven five one. That's my phone number. That's my phone number. Yes, it's all done. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to wrap this live stream up like that because I should really go to bed. I didn't really sleep much last night. Um, I need to be a little bit disciplined. You know, part of me just wants to go, oh, it's already almost two. I should just spriggity it up all the way till, till uh, that time on Sunday night. I A G last one. Something to tell you, Mark says I am transsexual and I understood your advances, but I just didn't want to drink the alcohol. That's smart. I A G last. Remember, if somebody's offering you roofies, ask to see their all licenses, all the time license for roofing people. Make sure they're not expired. <laughs> Take some quiet Eric, time and rest, Eric. Eric yeah. Question before you leave. So when people talk about the good times, as they always do, do you do you ever do you never agree with them that there was a there was a golden age of TWFP? Would you say there was? And if so, what was it? No, I don't think there. Not for me. I, I think of different, various different. Uh, time period like you know there's a time period with original host Zachary that involved Abraham and um, involved uh, <laughs> I get distracted by these chat peoples with their chats they're so engaging are you okay Ambon? Yeah, all caps. That's unlike you. Are you yelling right now? What was I talking about? Oh yeah, golden age. You might think of that as a golden age. I went with Zachary and Abraham uh, and Delilah to a national debate tournament in Salt Lake City. I really enjoyed that trip. That was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of TWFP videos got made. That was 
like before a lot of people, I, it was before way before CZ actually. I don't know why I said CZ. Um, anyway, uh, then there was a time period where there's like light bulb and some of you guys like when it was back when it was uh, GTM instead of instead of being open all the time. And then there's, you know, there's a lot of eras. I need to do another retrospective of the next check chunk retrospective or something like that. Regardless, I don't think of any particular time as the golden era, era but I, I do think of certain times as chapters and such, you know, like certain chapters. They're all precious metals, but none of them are gold. TWFP got better when Eric's beard got longer. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Good night, everybody. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.